Okay, so in this video, we will consider simple examples of undefined limits. Let's look quite simply with the following right-hand limit. So we're letting x approach 0 from the right, and we consider quite simply 1 over x. Well, let's look at our case. We have 1 over, now as x approaches 0, clearly x approaches 0, but since x approaches 0, if you think of it, x will be slightly bigger than 0 because we are approaching 0 from the right, so x is slightly bigger than 0. So we have, and you can write this as 1 over 0 plus. To specify that we know that 0, although it is a quantity shrinking to 0, is always positive. The question is, well, what will this give us? Let's take a very simple numerical sequence for x shrinking to 0 from the positive side. So we could have x equals, say, 0 0.1 then x even smaller, 0 0.01, then x even smaller, 0 0.001, let's do one last more, 0, 0, 0, 1. And we could keep going like this. So really, x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, but always positive. Well, we're asking, as x is shrinking to 0 from the positive side, what happens to 1 over x? Well. 1 over x in this case, 1 over 0 0.1 is 10. 1 over x in this case, 1 over 0 0.01 is 100. 1 over x in this case, 1 over 0 0.001 is 1,000. And 1 over x in this case is 10,000. And so you can see where this is going. As x is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but always positive, 1 over x is getting larger and larger and larger. So as x shrinks to 0 from the positive side, 1 over x blows up to infinity. So this limit does not exist. It is undefined, but very specifically by blowing up to positive infinity. And so we write simply, the limit is equal to positive infinity. What if we had looked now at the limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0 from the left-hand side? What would change? Once again, we have a 1 over 0 case. But since x approaches 0 from the left, x will be slightly less than 0, therefore negative. So here you could think of, instead of taking 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, and so forth, you could take the negative. You could take x to be negative 0.1, negative 0.01, negative 0.001, and so forth. And 1 over x would be negative 10, negative 100, negative 1,000, negative 10,000, and so forth. And so you see that as x goes to 0 from the negative side, 1 over x will get larger and larger and larger but always being negative, negative 10, negative 100, negative 1,000, and so forth. And so we get here, the limit is once again undefined, but very specifically by blowing up to negative infinity. So you can see that 1 over positive 0 yields positive infinity. As 1 over something positive is positive, and as the denominator shrinks to 0, the fraction blows up to positive infinity. With a 1 over negative 0 case, same argument, but now the limit blows up to negative infinity. And we could ask finally, what about, say, the two-sided limit? This is a limit from the right, the limit from the left. What if we asked, what is the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x? And now we're not specifying if x approaches 0 from the right or from the left. And here we can't say that this is positive infinity, as if we were on the left of 0, which is allowed, we would get negative infinity. And we can't say this is equal to negative infinity for the exact same reason. So the best we can say in this case is this limit is undefined.
And you can visualize this quite simply by graphing 1 over x. Here's a graph of 1 over x for positive real values of x. And here's a graph for negative real values of x. And so you can see that as we approach 0 from the right, y blows up to positive infinity. As we approach 0 from the left, y approaches negative infinity. So if we allow x to approach 0 from either side, then we can't choose between positive and negative infinity, and so the limit is undefined. And that's it. Let's look at two more examples. So let's approach negative 4, and we'll take 3 over 2x plus 8. As always, we look at the case that we are dealing with. As x approaches negative 4, 3 is always 3, over 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, plus 8 is 0. So we have a 3 over 0 case. The question is, can we say this is positive infinity, or negative infinity, or neither, right? As 3 over something small will be something very big, but will it be positive or negative? It's not clear, and the only way to figure this out is by looking at the limit from the left and from the right. So let's do so. Let's let approach x, let's let x approach negative 4 from the left, and here we can factor, this is 2 times x plus 4. Once again, we have a 3 over 0 case. Let's see if we can determine if the quantity here is positive or negative. Now think of it, again, draw your real line. We are letting x approach negative 4, but we are approaching from the left. So x is to the left of negative 4, so slightly smaller than negative 4. We are interested in the sign of x plus 4, so add 4 on both sides. And so x plus 4 will be less than negative 4 plus 4, but this is equal to 0. And you can see that x plus 4 is less than 0. As this is less than 0, and 2 is positive, the product is negative. And so from the left-hand side, we have a 3 over negative 0. So we have a positive over a negative. The result is negative. And a constant over a 0 will blow up to infinity. So we get from the left, the limit is undefined, but specifically by blowing up to negative infinity. What about the right-hand side? Once again, we have a 3 over 0 case. Can we say if it is positive or negative? Draw your real line. Negative 4. But now x is approaching negative 4 from the right, so it is slightly larger than negative 4. Add 4 on both sides, and you'll get negative 4 plus 4 is less than x plus 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So x plus 4 is positive. And so x plus 4 is positive. 2 times a positive number is also positive. So now we have 3 over a positive 0 case. So positive over positive is positive, And 3 over 0 yields an infinity. So we get positive infinity. And so you see, well, what can we say about the original two-sided limit? The limit from the left is negative infinity. The limit from the right is positive infinity. So we can't pick either. The best we can say in the original limit is that it is undefined. 
If both limits were positive infinity, then this would be equal to positive infinity. If both limits were negative infinity, then this would be equal to negative infinity. As they're different, the best we can say is that the limit is undefined. Let's look at one other example. So let's now let x approach 1, and we'll take 2x plus 3 over 1 minus x squared. Let's look at our case. As x is approaching 1, 2x will approach 2 plus 3 will be approaching 5 over 1 minus 1 squared is 0, so we have a 5 over 0 case. Once again, the question is the same. 5 over something very small will be very big. Will we get positive infinity or negative infinity or simply undefined? Well, to figure this out, once again, we have to look at the limit from the left and from the right. Ultimately, all we're trying to figure out is, is our expression, 1 minus x squared, positive or negative in either case? Every time you have a polynomial, to figure out the sign of the expression near a given value of x, the simplest thing you can do is simply factor the expression. And 1 minus x squared is a difference of squares, and it factors as 1 minus x times 1 plus x. Again, we look at our case. It's 5 over 0. Now let's see if, as x approaches 1 from the left, if this will be positive or negative. So here's 1. x is slightly smaller than 1. Look at the two terms. First, the second is actually obvious. As x approaches 1, this will approach 1 plus 1, which is 2, which is positive. So this is always going to be positive in both cases. So there is no question there. What about 1 minus x? Well, for the limit from the left, x is less than 1, and we are interested in the expression 1 minus x. So let's subtract x from both sides. If we'll get x minus x is less than 1 minus x, but x minus x is 0, and so 1 minus x is positive in this case. So what do we have here? Our denominator is something positive times something positive, therefore the result is positive. We have a 5 over positive 0, which gives us positive infinity. Now the limit from the right. We are approaching 1, but x is slightly bigger than 1. Once again we're considering 1 minus x, so we subtract x on both sides. So 1 minus x is less than x minus x, which is 0. And so now 1 minus x is negative. And so our denominator is the product of a negative with a positive, so the end result is negative. So we have a 5 over negative 0 case, which will give us negative infinity. And so if we go back to the original limit, once again, the two limits, from the left and from the right, are different. So the best we can say is that this limit is undefined. And if you go back to the previous problem, you always have to be careful, you see? Here the limit from the left gave negative infinity, the limit from the right gave positive infinity. Here we had the opposite. The limit from the left gave positive infinity, the limit from the right gave negative infinity. 
So don't assume that the limit from the left will always give negative infinity and the limit from the right will always give positive infinity. Sometimes it can be the opposite. So the lesson here in conclusion is simply whenever you have a 5 over a 0 case or anything non-zero over a 0 as a case for a limit, you have to figure out whether the quantity is positive, negative, or both depending on the side of the limit. If there is any ambiguity with a two-sided limit, you have to simply consider the limit from the left and then the limit from the right.